CBS4 is committed to celebrating black history in a series of special reports this month. And today we showcase Dorsey Park and the Negro League team that played baseball there in then segregated Miami. Yeah, it's where locals would come from the 1920s to the 1960s and where a team that had roots at Dorsey would emerge as a force in Negro League baseball. CBS4's Hank Tester takes a look back. these colorful walls could talk. What a story they could tell. The artwork says a lot. The Miami story of black baseball. 17th and Northwest First Avenue, Miami. Black folks used to come out dressed to the nines after Sunday church. Dressed to the nines and watch ball. It was a very exciting place to be. In segregated Jim Crow, Miami, Dorsey Park was a haven. The humble city of Miami ballpark ready for baseball in 1923. It was the, the community's park. <laughs> Remember, we're talking about a Jim Crow era, an era of total segregation. It was here where barnstorming Negro League teams played, banned from playing Major League Baseball, blacks had their own Major League world and their brand of baseball. They, they always wanted to play against the white teams, and when they did play against the white team, they kicked their ass. And the diamond has always been in this position, going back to 1923. Abel Sanchez is a walking, talking expert on local baseball history and Dorsey Park. That's actually the, the correct logos. The teams, players that pass through. From the Homestead Grays, Kansas City Monarchs, Birmingham Barons, Indianapolis Clowns, which of course started here as the Ethiopian Clowns. Miami never had a team in the Negro Leagues, but the Miami Clowns originated here. First as Miami Giants, evolving into the Miami Clowns, morphing into the barnstorming Ethiopian Clowns, eventually the Indianapolis Clowns in the Negro Major League. And they wore hula skirts and uh, painted their lips and faces and buck eyes and uh, all of that kind of kind of thing. Uh, and quite frankly, they're one of the, the biggest draws in, in, in Negro League baseball. After the pregame show, they played very serious baseball. All that history memorialized by the murals that adorn the remains of the Dorsey Park walls. The players, Satch, Josh, Judy. When the Homestead Grays came down and that first game against the Clowns, Josh Gibson hit two home runs. And one of them supposedly was over the railroad tracks, which freaked everybody out because I don't think anybody, especially being a right-handed hitter, he probably went right center and he put a ball over those tracks. And little known at Dorsey Park, in these games, there'd be a special section reserved for white fans. And they came. They had support. So you had white folks, black folks getting together to watch some good baseball. So celebrating 100 years of Negro baseball, the Miami Marlins wore jerseys, homage to the Miami Giants, a gesture to the history of black ball, Dorsey Park, and the greats that played on this diamond in the heart of Overtown. The Dorsey Park, Overtown. Hank Tester, CBS4 News. Wow, fascinating. And we are your source for Black History Month events, including video and slideshows. Just go to cbsmiami.com slash black history. What a wonderful history lesson. I love seeing the then and now. Very cool. Especially if you're a baseball fan. Mm -hmm. Coming up later in sports, the Dolphins give one of their most.